vote for around four minutes to be followed by Jamie Halker Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. <clears throat> the Scottish Government's position has always been to deliver the best outcomes for Scotland's fishing in interests. A world class fishing nation delivering responsible and sustainable fisheries management and communities. Put simply, fish, folk, future. I was brought up in the East Nuke of Fife. Fish was a constant through my childhood. My father's accounting business supported fishers. My higher geography project was on the development and sustainability of East Nuke fishing. And of course, a fish supper at Ainster Harbour was a top treat. I studied in Aberdeen and came face to face with the bigger industrial fishing industry there. As an accountant, I audited fishing businesses, reconciling catches with quotas. And now, living in Argyll and Butte, I represent a different but extremely important element of Scotland's fishing industry, the West Coast inshore fishers. I thank those that work so hard in this industry. Fisheries is con correctly a devolved matter. There are significant differences in the industry within Scotland and across the UK. Differences should be recognised. Management of fish stocks needs to be tailored to individual circumstances. And I'm pleased that the Scottish Government, when constructing its core team for the coastal state negotiations, brought in voices and experiences from all elements of our fishing industry, including Communities Inshore Fisheries Alliance. This is a community-based organisation with the main aim of addressing the economic and physical needs of the Scottish inshore fisheries and its associated communities and businesses. They provide local wisdom, which combined with the science can ensure the most sustainable results. Coastal communities should not be cut off from opportunities. Just because they haven't done something for a while shouldn't negate them from the chance to return to it. And they can also comment from a, sorry, from a practical perspective, for example, quota swaps from west to east and how they could impact negatively on the West Coast Fishers Nefrots fleet if discards are lost. By bringing everyone round the table, the Scottish Government is creating the space to ensure Scotland's interests are protected. Leaving the EU has di di disproportionately impacted on Scotland. One of my fishers has lost 60% of his market and is worried about the labour impact too. And our fishing fleets have access to fewer valuable fish stocks. Until Scotland regains its independence and EU membership, the Scottish Government will continue to be actively involved in the coastal state negotiations, playing a key and active role in ensuring that Scotland's interests are protected. And the Scottish Government will be an active partner, as the Cabinet Secretary has said, at international negotiations, especially when it comes to fish stocks in Scottish waters and access to Scottish waters by foreign vessels. <clears throat> fish don't recognise international boundaries, therefore it is vital that they are jointly managed to ensure long-term sustainability. Fish, folk and future. So to finish, presiding officer, as I said, I grew up in the East Nuke of Fife, home to the award-winning Scottish Fisheries Museum. Its collection traces the development of commercial fishing through the ages, including Loch Fine skiffs and Campbelltown ring nets from Argyll and Butte. It tells the story of a way of life that is so important to Scotland, one that through constant innovation has adapted and changed. Fishing survives because of the dedication of folk working often in harsh conditions. Sustainable fishing is crucial to its future. <clears throat>